Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of The Money Codes. This is Joel here. Today I want to go over the business credit formula. I want to go over what that means. So now let's go here on the next slide. So what are the advantages of business credit? Again, I mentioned this at the top of the video. If you see someone saying that they got 50 to 100 to 150,000 doing a funding play, right? You hear this a lot on social media. What's the funding play for Citizens Bank? What's the funding play for US Bank? What's the funding play for getting a certain amount of American Express cards with one inquiry? So again, we hear that all the time. The funding plays, we're gonna go over examples of what that would be. 0% interest on cards for 12 to 20 months. So if you wanted to get a personal credit card and target one that offered you 0%, whether it be on purchases or on balance transfers, we talked about plenty of those type of cards on this channel. What about the business credit side? Why is that important? Well, if you're able to get 0% interest for 12, 18, 20, sometimes a little bit more than that on your business side, you can see here on the third line, the juiciest aspect of that business credit is that utilization on your business side is not going to report on your personal side. That's really the biggest thing. So if you're watching and you don't even have a business, you still need to pay attention because you can still benefit, you can still apply, you can still get generous credit limits. Because if you guys weren't paying attention, JP Morgan did another acquisition earlier this week. The Fed did another quarter uh, interest rate hike. So again, the things that we're talking about and we're continuing to talk about is still happening. If you're doing funny sequences on your business side, you're getting that 0%, you're able to take advantage of the 0% offers on balance transfers and purchases and when you do your spend and you're actually using that 0% on your business side, that utilization is not going to report to your personal side unless you default. But if you don't default, all of your business transactions and you're running it up on your business side is not going to weigh down your personal credit. And I'm gonna talk about that on the next slide where it's basically you're protecting the golden goose. I'm gonna talk about that one in a second. No doc, no collateral, no tax return. So another reason why we're excited about business credit why we're advocating for learning about it, applying, getting your business entities in compliance. You guys are basically starting from scratch. This is a startup. A lot of these bigger institutions, typically, and there are exceptions, but a lot of them are gonna to wanna to see one or two years, um, whether it be tax returns or P&L statements, or they may wanna see collateral, depending on the type of funding that you're pursuing. The advantage of business credit, especially if you do it on the PG side, is if you open up your business entity last week or last month, right, is relatively new. If your personal credit profile is where it needs to be, and we're going to talk about that in a second, but if it's where it needs to be, you can start applying for you know, the Chase Inc., the Amex Business Blue. There are certain products that you can go ahead and apply for, get approved for, without having to have two years of tax returns, two years of bank statements. The workaround is once you go down the business credit card path, especially the PG path, you have a brand new corporation and begin applying basically the next day. This is another reason why this is very intriguing. What's another reason? Points. So the Amex business gold four times on the top two categories. There are so many great credit products out there. For example, the Amex business gold, Forex on top two categories. A lot of you guys out there that are doing a lot of advertising, you're putting a lot of spend, whether it be Facebook marketing, YouTube marketing, but if you're putting a lot of spend and you're putting it through your Amex products, specifically the Amex Business Gold, again, this is just an example. Now, if you know anything about American Express, once you get the MR points, you take that into the transfer portal, that's when things get big. That's when people start to do uh, travel hacking. That's when people are able to travel uh, to Europe for literally pennies on the dollar. And how are we seeing people use these cards, right? So if you're able to get 50, 75, 100,000 in your funding play, you're able to now take that and now you can do plays with a Turo, you can do Airbnb plays. So now the main thing here is how can we take other people's money and now invest it in things that's gonna give us a return on our money. So now let's make the distinction. You have your consumer credit, AKA your personal cards. If you have a Chase Sapphire Preferred or Reserve, right? You have your personal credit cards and we know the advantages that come with that. You have your business credit cards. These are the ones where a lot of times we're gonna be PGing, we're gonna be personally guaranteeing, meaning your social security number is going to be attached on the application when you do your application for your business credit cards. So this right here means your personal credit profile has to be 
fundable. Corporate credit, right? So now a lot of people think about corporate credit or they talk about getting funding um, in their business entity without having to personally guarantee. If your business entity is not making over two, three, four million plus annually, you really need to be sticking to um, getting your personal credit organized, cleaned up. You wanna make sure that is set in stone before you start looking at how can I get business credit cards with bad credit so I can avoid having to personally guarantee. You gotta make sure your personal credit profile is on point because it will play into everything that we're gonna be doing going forward. All right, so if I have to PG, what's the point, right? So I got this little picture here, the goose that laid the golden egg. I don't know if you guys remember this story, right? You had this farmer, every day he would go to his farm, see the goose, the goose will give him and the golden egg every single day. He ended up being greedy, ended up killing the goose. And then once the goose died, he was not able to get any more golden eggs. What does this have to do with PGing and your personal credit? Your personal credit profile is the goose that lays the golden egg. If you keep that goose alive and you keep it healthy and you allow it to just do what it does, you're going to be able to now take those golden eggs. And what are the golden eggs in this example? It's essentially relationships with banks, relationships with credit unions. Your personal credit profile is going to be what opens the door to all of these financial institutions in order for you to get your application and get your funding. You're protecting your personal credit profile or hiding the utilization. I already touched on that. If you're somebody that is doing your personal side, so let's say you are an entrepreneur, right? Let's say you're even cash flowing pretty well, but you're spending so much on your personal credit cards, but because you don't have a business credit profile, because you don't have a separation between your business and your personal credit profile, when you start to swipe, when you start to buy inventory, printers, marketing fees, when you start putting things on your personal credit cards, it's going to immediately kill your personal credit profile. It's going to kill your score because now your utilization is far too high. Slowly shift, separate your personal spend. Now you have your business spend. If you need to go ahead and spend 20, 25,000 to put down on a property, whatever the case may be, if the only thing that you have are only personal credit cards, you're shooting yourself in the foot because you're never gonna get your credit profile where it needs to be. Then when you try to do your next funding sequence, it's not gonna work out for you. We protect that personal credit profile. We start doing applications. On the business side, you are going to see higher limits with better terms. You're going to get more 0% offers, and that's going to be able to scale your business more effectively and more efficiently. All right, so now let's look at the entity requirements. I'm going to keep saying in every, every single page, your personal credit profile must be optimized first. Guys, if you still have derogatories, collections, charge off, lates, and you're trying to do these funding plays, you're going to be disappointed. So ideally, you want to avoid sole proprietorship. Can you do it? Yes. Will I advise that? No. Right. Get an LLC, get an S Corp, uh, low risk name. So again, this is going to be on your business entity side. Guys, if you want to see the longer format of this, I did an hour long video. I'll link that. I'll put a little timestamp above. Go watch that and I actually show you guys. I think I used um, Inkfile. So using Inkfile, I actually registered and I created a brand new LLC. I got a brand new tax ID number from IRS.gov through that whole process if you haven't seen that before i'm not going to do everything in this video to keep it short but make sure you at least make sure you go at least watch that video to make sure that your business entity is set up correctly right so you want to have a low risk name so again right now i know a lot of people are hyped about the cannabis industry right with these delta eights delta nines delta tens so if you have a business entity and you're calling your you know your llc money codes weed blunts and kush right you're shooting yourself in the foot. A lot of these banks, they're gonna pay attention to your industry. They're gonna pay attention to NAICS codes. I think I ended up recording the video I did with Navy Federal and I put for my business application that I was, I think like a personal finance coach because I was in the finance industry. Navy Federal said no and I was denied because of the industry that I was in. So pay attention to the name of your entity, pay attention to the risk. I talk about in the other video, which industries are more risky business bank account so you want to make sure that whoever you're trying to do your next play with whether that be with pnc whether that be with truest whether that be with chase whoever you decide that is you do want to go ahead and create that business bank account with them right it's just more data points it's more relationship so you want to go ahead and do that prior to doing your applications having a true business address non-po box 
maximizing your bank rating. So uh, the amounts that you're putting into your bank accounts, whether it be $1, $1,000, or $10,000. So the more that you put into your business bank accounts, the more that's in there, for how long it stays in there, all of these variables, they factor into your bank rating. So the higher the bank rating, the higher the limits, the better the terms, the type of products that you can get offered is going to improve with a better bank rating. What about your personal credit profile? Your FICO 8s, you went above 700. I would say this time last year, we could still probably get good funding with uh, 660, 680. Now, just to be a little bit safer, again, because of what the economy is looking at right now, everything is getting more tightened. No derogatory accounts. I mentioned that before. No charge-offs, no collections, no lates. Right? Nothing in the last 24 months specifically that's going to be a red flag. Guys, if you do not have that taken care of, find a way to reach out to me, find a way to get into the inner circle, download my videos, download my letters, get my strategy so you can be above 700. Uh, credit cards from tier one banks, preferably not store cards. So again, I'm guilty of this. I did multiple videos on the shopping cart trick. I did multiple videos on, again, if your credit profile isn't strong enough. In those videos, I taught you guys how to basically get primary trade lines added onto your credit profile without having to get a hard inquiry applying to you know different banks. So we did the shopping cart trick. Just because you have a Macy's card or a Victoria's Secret card, but when it comes to getting actual funding, right, you're gonna go to Chase and you're trying to get the, the Chase Inc. or you're trying to get an Amex product, or you're trying to get a 0% card from US Bank business card. If the only thing that you have on your credit profile is, again, Macy's, Victoria's Secret, um, Home Depot card, that's not going to cut it. We need cards from the major institutions, not just store cards. So low utilization. So prior to you doing your applications, you don't want to do a funding sequence if you have credit cards right now that are sitting at 70%, 80% utilization. All right, that's not going to make sense. Business bank account. So we talked about this before. Whoever you're doing your next play with, whoever you're trying to do your next application with, you want to make sure you have a business bank account set up with them. Uh, we talked about the bank rating and we want to have less than three inquiries in the last six months. The tier one banks, your Chase's, your U.S. banks, your Bank of America's, they tend to be more inquiry sensitive than some of your regional local banks. This is the reason right here why we have gardening periods. So you might use the month of January to apply for three, four, five, six different credit cards. You get your approvals and for the next several months, you may just want to wait be in the gardening period, not do any additional uh, credit card applications. You don't want to get any more hard inquiries. But what are you doing in the meantime? While you're not doing your applications, you are creating business bank accounts or creating relationships with the next banks and the next credit union that you want to do your applications with. You let that deposit sit for maybe a couple of months and then you do your applications again. Do the same thing, do your gardening period, then you do your applications again. Right? This is literally how it works. And you want cards with credit limits of at least 5K, ideally 10K and above. If you've been doing your credit limit increase uh, request, a lot of you guys should have some cards with at least a $5,000 credit limit, if not higher, if not at least 10,000 or above. What about Dun & Bradstreet? So at this point, you haven't heard me talk about, about Uline or Granger. I haven't talked about any of those things. Does that mean that I think Dun & Bradstreet is unimportant or they played out? No, and I'm going to do a separate video specifically about Dun & Bradstreet, Experian Business, Equifax Business, SBFE. I'm going to talk about those in a separate video. And depending on your industry and depending on your specific niche, there are a lot of benefits of building up your paid up scores and getting trade lines added on to your small business credit reports. There's definitely good reasons to build those up. But for this particular video, for the people that are talking about, again, funding plays, business credit cards, 0% financing for 12 months, 18 months. If you're looking for ways to inject 50, 75, 100,000 into whatever it is that you're trying to do, right? You have a startup, you don't have tax returns, you don't have collateral, you don't have a PNL statement, you don't have bank statements, so there's no income to report. A lot of these applications that you're gonna do is going to be off of your stated income, meaning what you think your business is going to generate over the next 12 months. It's stated, again, that's the benefit of going after these type of cards. At this point, you don't have to worry about your, your tier ones, your U lines, your all that. We're going to talk about that on a different day. Make sure that your credit profile, your personal side, and make sure that your business entity, the one that you created, meets compliance. But you can get those high limit 0% finance cards. 
with just those two things and not have to worry about D and B. And here are a couple examples. US Bank Platinum Card, 0% for 18 months. The Chase Inc, 0% for 12 months. Amex Blue Business Cash or the Plus Card, 0% for 12 months. Citizens Bank Platinum, 0% for 12 months. If you guys have seen marketing that is talking about credit stacking, or they talk about credit churning, or again, 0% for 12 months, when you start seeing these type of advertisements, that means there are businesses that will do all of this for you, right? They'll help build your credit profiles, they'll help repair your credit, they'll help tell you like which banks to go after, which regional banks, which local banks, which local credit unions, but they get a percentage of whatever they ultimately end up getting you. So if you go to one of these companies, and I'm not gonna say the name of the companies, but you can literally just Google um, credit stacking companies or 0% uh, funding plays or funding companies, right? There are a lot out there, but what they're not going to tell you is all the information that we're talking about on this channel for free, getting the profile personal side, getting that set up, making sure that you're avoiding certain red flags, uh, creating your business entity, making sure that your compliance is where it needs to be, avoiding the name, paying attention to the NACS codes, doing your proper sequence on your credit card application, not just doing the shotgun method, which is like you have four or five uh, applications open. You don't really know which bureau they're going to pull from. You're not really sure. You're not really sure of anything. You just got five applications on your Safari browser, and then you're just hitting submit, 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 and you're hoping for the best. That's not really the most efficient way to do it. So again, there are people that will do this for you for a success fee, which means that if they do all this for you, they get you $100,000. They're going to take out 8,000, 10,000, if not more of that $100,000 they just got you. That's the play. So that's something that you can avoid. Do these guys, do these companies have uh, inherent benefit? Yes, they do. I'll, I'll keep it real with you. A lot of these companies, they have uh, relationships with banking managers. So if they're about to do an application for you and they're friends with the relationship manager at Truist or uh, Chase or whomever, the data that that relationship manager is going to be able to provide you and tell you, hey, you weren't able to get this product or right now you're missing age or maybe a couple of your accounts on your personal trade lines, they need to be tweaked, maybe you need to pay down some balances, real life feedback that you can go ahead, apply, and then do your next sequence. So again, the bottom line is all this information, essentially you can do yourself, but you have to be just aware of the rules. If you know you want to get a truest product, make sure that you're planning out several months prior to keep your inquiries low, make sure that you have an account with them set up, make sure you have a deposit with them, make sure to get that bank rating as high as possible, and then do the application that you're trying to do, right? So this is it guys, you don't have to pay anyone uh, $8,000, $10,000, $12,000 to do this. This right here is literally the game, the rule book. Now again, the longer your business entity has been in business, the people that are out there that are opening their business accounts with $10,000, $15,000, even if they're getting it from other credit cards. Again, that's another play or hack, right? These are the people that are gonna get higher limit. Understand the game, understand the rules, and do it for yourself. If you are still having trouble, go down in the comments, ask questions. If you guys need to, go on moneycodes.com, find a way to get on a uh, clarity call with me, it's about 30 minutes. We'll go over all your questions, we'll look at your credit profile, and we'll see what needs work, what should be your next goal, and how can we get you to the next milestone. And aside from that, guys, I'm going to check you out in the next video. Have a blessed one. Peace. Hey, what's up, guys? If you're still watching and you're enjoying the content, click the link below and get access to my cheat sheet guide. It's a free PDF, how to get an 800 credit score without any gimmicks or fluff. With this info, you can start cleaning up your credit profile today.